Good morning. Happy Saturday. Hope you're well. We are well. Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, where I talk about how I lost 97.4 pounds after starting the ketogenic protocol, how you may be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your life uh, like I did. Hope you are safe and safe. (laughs) It's, It's scary out there sometimes. So let's jump into it, shall we? Um, for those of you who are not familiar with my Saturday formats, I talk a little bit about the topic du jour and then a quick little break to acknowledge a couple of things and then turning my attention to your comments and questions. By the way, feel free to ask me anything. Not that I have all the answers. I have answers mostly for myself. I don't even have all the answers for myself. Oh, and I can see out of the corner of my eye, little hearts floating up. Thank you very much. All right. So today, how do you start the ketogenic protocol? For those who don't know, the ketogenic protocol, as I learned it and as I have practiced it now for nine and a half years, keeps your carbohydrate intake to 20 grams of carbohydrate a day or fewer. That's total carbs, not net carbs. Why? Because net carbs just means more carbs. It's a, it's a marketing thing food manufacturers do, the net carbs thing. And I know that there's supposedly, but that's kind of been refuted. Anyway, about the fiber. So, anywho, keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day. Total, not net. If it's not on page four, link below. Don't eat it. But you don't even need a food list. It's fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables and leafy greens, and limited amounts of full-fat dairy. You don't even need the vegetables, greens, or dairy if you don't want. Next part, don't eat if you're not hungry. Hands down, the most challenging part for most people, and certainly the most challenging part for me. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Next most challenging part, stop eating when you've had enough. Eat slowly, that'll help. And then I've added, be patient and persevere. As with most things in life, you know, you just have to be patient and persevere. (laughs) All right. So that's the protocol. How do you start? Well, let me tell you what you don't need to do. Do what works for you. Do what you like. Do what reeks true. But what you don't need to do is you don't need to go buy anything special. You don't need to wait until Monday when you get to the grocery store. Because unless your house only has carby packaged foods and no eggs, not a, no ground beef, no chicken with the skin. If you, if you only have packaged foods in your pantry, which I guess some people that is all they have, you don't have to go to the store and buy anything special. There, there are no ketogenic foods. As my friend Amy Berger says, Foods are not ketogenic. Our bodies are ketogenic. What does that mean? When we reduce our carbohydrate intake sufficiently to the point where we, our liver is not pumping out glucose as a primary source of fuel, when that tap is turned off, our bodies happily and efficiently flip over to burning ketone bodies or fat for fuel. You're in ketosis. You're burning fat for fuel. Our bodies love it. Our brains love it. It's good for us. So our bodies are in a state of ketosis, which is a good and beneficial thing. But there's no food that will make you go there. The only way you get there is to not eat carbs. I mean, to eat, keep your carbohydrate intake very low. For some people, very low means 50 grams per day. But most people, it's really going to be, particularly if you've had ongoing metabolic and weight issues, it's going to be 20 grams or fewer. That's that's pretty much that's prescri- prescription strength, as our, our friend the good doctor calls it. That's prescription strength. If you want over the counter strength, do something else. It, but don't blame keto for what the net carbs did. Don't blame keto for what the cheat day did. This is a consistent way to eat. So how do you start? You don't need to buy a kit. You don't need to buy a food list. You don't need to buy supplements. You don't need to buy electrolytes. You don't need to buy special food. How you start is the next time you eat, lay off the carbs. 
if everyone around you is eating um, rotisserie chicken and green beans and biscuits and potato salad, you do that too. Just lay off the biscuits and the potato salad. You don't have to eat differently, like a separate meal from everyone else. Just lay off the carbs. And it might take some practice. Might take some shift of thinking. But that's how you start. That's how I started. My story, I've repeated it, oh, I don't know, 150 million times. I was obese, morbidly obese for 30 years from my mid-20s to my mid-50s. You can go to my blog, link below, and see photographs of my unhappier days. And I had tried all those things that we all have tried. Move more, eat less, juice diet. I went plant-based. I tried the summer of the triathlons. I tried it all and nothing. I just, and I knew low carb work for me since 1977, but the arguments against it were so omnipresent and I was making my own arguments against it. I know it works, but I can't go over the rest of my life without eating tortilla chips. I'm powerless in the face of M&Ms. I told myself all those things that we tell ourselves. Self-destructive and untrue. I've been through a lot. Why did I think, and I'm here to tell the tale. Why did, I mean, really dramatic stuff. Why did I think I was powerless against M&Ms? I'm pretty powerful. I'm pretty powerful. Certainly stronger than a bag of candy or a bowl of tortilla chips. So, but I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I Googled how to not take insulin for type 2 diabetes. Came across the famous page 4 video. If it's not on page 4, don't eat it. Fatty sources of protein, limited amounts of non-starchy vegetables. I mean, really limited, like a cup a day before cooking of non-starchy vegetables and two cups a day before cooking of leafy greens. But those are maximums, not minimums. So the next, it was a Wednesday morning and I was had had a little conversation with myself about how miserable I felt. And I m- knew I might be able to live for another 30, 40 years, but I wasn't sure I wanted to feeling the way I did. So I saw the video. I thought, well, that worked before. I mean, because frankly, page four is the induction period of Atkins, which I knew in 1977 worked. I lost 13 pounds in college. I'd put on 13 pounds over the first year and a half of college. I lost it, threw the book away. And then made other stabs at it over the course of time. And then I would, again, tell myself the big lie. Then life came at me. And so I ate carbs because, you know, that will fix the problem, won't it? Eating Pizza will fix the problem. No. Won't. But I told myself the same lies that many, many of you might maybe tell yourselves or have told yourself. How do you start? And this is the same for how do you restart? Because I restarted. It wasn't called keto back in 2014. It was no starch, no sugar with the video I saw. Dr. Eric Westman of Duke University, who I'm happy to say is now a a pal, a friend. Lay off the carbs. That's how you start. Next time you eat, lay off the carbs. You don't have to rush out and buy anything. You know, I'm, I'm presently making another concerted stab at fitness, physical fitness. I'm healthy. But I want to be as fit and strong as I can be. And I have had success at this in different ways over time. But then I got off track early this year. And uh, I'm recommitting. You know what I don't need to do in order to, to get the benefits of going to the gym and working out? I don't need to have a membership to the gym. So it's not like, oh, I have to wait until I can become a member of the gym before I can do this. You don't have to belong to a gym. You know, I can do push-ups against a counter and walk the dog and do squats and planks. But 
So I go to the gym. But I, I don't need to wait to do that. I didn't need to wait to do that. I don't need to buy a bunch of equipment. Decent pair of shoes and some comfortable leggings and a shirt to work out in. I don't need to spend a lot of money. I just need to do it. Quit thinking about doing it. Quit telling myself why it's inconvenient for me to do it. Why I don't want to do it. Just do it. I, okay, super Nike commercial, right? By the way, I don't wear Nikes. Not for any particular reason other than I'm very frugal. So same thing with starting the ketogenic protocol. You don't need to buy anything. Anything. You can be 100% successful without buying one thing. It's what you put in your mouth, and excuse me, scratch that. It's what you don't put in your mouth that gets it done. It's not pounding back a lot of fat. This is not a high-fat diet. It's only high-fat compared to the fact that it's not low-fat. It's not a high-protein diet. It's just eat the, eat, you know what? If you eat fatty sources of protein, that means eat the fat that comes with the protein. Eat eggs with the yolks, poultry with the skin. Beef with the ribbon of fat, nice marbled chuck roast. Man, we made a brisket in the in the crock pot, and it is so delicious and super simple. Delicious and super simple, and it's not an expensive cut of meat. Eat um, well, eat fatty sources of protein. Don't pound down lots of fat. You don't eat a stick of butter at a time. You can do what you want to do. I don't. You know, a few eggs, breakfast sausage. Yesterday I ate, after I worked out and I had some other things to do when I was home and it was early afternoon, I hadn't eaten any solid food yet. I had a, just quickly grilled up a third of a pound Angus burger, you know, pre-made patty, one slice of a Vardy cheese, and I fried an egg and put it on top. You want to talk about decadent. But it didn't have to buy special food. So how do you start? Next time you eat, lay off the carbs. Try not to overthink it. Try not to get bogged down in all these calculations and measurements. All you need to count are carbs but mostly you need to listen to your body. And that is the challenging part. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Wow. You would think that'd be pretty basic, right? It, it, it shouldn't need, to, it's, it's like, you know, if you step out into 30 degree temperature, air, it's not like you have to ponder, do I need a jacket? Let me think about it. Do I need a jacket? Yeah, you kind of know you need to put on a jacket if you're standing in 30-degree temperature. Listen to your body. You don't usually need to find out, do I need to go to sleep? If you're yawning and can barely keep your eyes open, you probably need to go to sleep. But we've lost the way to recognize actual hunger. Brain hunger, our brain telling us to get to eat something that is a whole different thing. That's when you're a sugar burner. And an excellent source to explain why this happens, my go-to book, uh, The Art and Science of Low-Carbohydrate Living by Drs. Stephen Finney and Jeff Bolick. I have a link to it at my blog under resources. It explains it beautifully. The how of it is keep your carbs very low. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop eating when you've had enough. That why does that work? And why does it not work when you're a sugar burner trying to just cut back? It's because your brain's telling you to get more glucose because glucose cannot be stored in the blood. And if your brain is telling you to get more glucose because it's an energy hog, then you have probably still have the remnants of your last meal in your stomach, and yet you're roaming the halls looking for something to eat. It doesn't happen when you're a fat burner. It's a very different thing. But then we have to learn what actual hunger is because a lot of us eat out of habit. Good news is we created those habits over time. We can change the habit over time. We can do it. I did it. Look at my pictures, man. I didn't get to be 
that perfectly spherical by not eating more food than I required. I enjoyed the food. I detested the results. How do you restart? Same way. It's, it's the, the thing is the same, whether it's your first time or 15th time. Lay off the carbs. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop eating when you've had enough. We have to grow comfortable with the fact that we don't need as much food as we eat. We're not going to waste away. As a society, we eat more than we require. Just look around. And as individuals, very often we eat more than we require. We, we've been told, you know, certain things are, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And we've become conditioned to huge portions. Right? It used to be. You know, when Mc, I, I don't remember when McDonald's started. I remember as a young child, and I, I had five older brothers. Um, McDonald's was a big deal. They'd come home with a sack of hamburgers. And what you could get at McDonald's at the time was hamburger, cheeseburger, and a small little paper envelope of fries. That was it. And now it's, you know, double quarter pounders with cheese and supersized boxes of french fries. And you go to any restaurant and it's, you know, bottomless bowls of something and endless things and baskets of this. We don't need that much food. We eat more than we require. So don't worry. You, you're not going to die of malnutrition. I get that question a lot, not about malnutrition, but I'm worried that I'm not eating enough. Uh, do you feel okay? Yes. Are you healthy? Yes. Are you able to move around and you, yes, you're probably eating enough, but we just have to change our thinking. We just do. If we want our lives to change, if we're happy with the way things are, don't change. Keep it up. I wasn't happy with the way things were with me. And I am grateful that I changed. I did make the change, even I knew low-carb worked, because I quit thinking about it for cosmetic reasons. It really was a health thing for me. I just saw 30 years of diminishing health and happiness ahead of me, and that was grim. All right, so that's it. How do you start? Lay off the carbs next time you eat, and then the next time you eat after that, lay off the carbs. Other people have a problem with it? Tell them to take a Valium. They'll be okay. Tell them not to worry so much about what you're doing. It's none of the business. No one gets a vote on what we eat. Okay, I'll repeat, you don't have to buy one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol, but I will happily sell you a little green book, record book, habit tracker, mood tracker, quotes, adult coloring pages, um... Get it at Amazon. The link to that is at my blog in the sidebar. And I'll sell you water bottles and T-shirts and caps and mugs and stickers and magnets all day long. Link to my spread shop is below. This T-shirt I'm wearing is spelling out keto in American Sign Language. K-E-T-O. I have mugs with that as well. So, But you don't have to buy anything. I'm just trying to earn my keep, y'all. And I like designing these things. I want to turn my... Attention and thanks to some patrons who are here. Um, I have a private support group on patreon.com where, and now there's a free trial option. You can jump on board for a week. I do a handful. I do 20 pre-recorded video snippets every weekday morning. I think I'm on 14, number 1465 or something like that. The topics usually suggested by patrons and a handful of patron only live streams on Crowdcast. Free trial. If you like it, you can stay. If it's not your cup of tea, no harm, no foul. And if you don't want to do any of that, you can just give me a little thumbs up and subscribe. That helps my channel a lot. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Pink drink. Hashtag Casey's Pink Drink. T tumbler full of ice. Diet tonic water. And a splash of diet cranberry and a squeeze of lime. Now, let me see what y'all have to say. And I just jumped in. Linda Bridges writes, hello from Texas. Jeannie Jarvis Maynard. 
Deb Ervol, how much magnesium? Okay, I'm, so that was a question. So Deb writes, I take magnesium glyconate or glycinate, 700 milligrams daily. I don't know how much Casey takes. I take magnesium chloride, slow mag, a link to that. We buy get it at Amazon, five things at a time. This is under the recommendation from Dr. Stephen Finney. Slow release magnesium. I take 364 milligrams a day. So does my husband. First thing in the morning, I, or I don't think it matters when I take it. That's how much I take. Candace writes, it's amazing how little food we really need, right? It is, we, we just, it's astounding. My husband and I continue to be amazed at how little we eat compared to even six months ago. My husband's never had a weight issue. He's never had health issues. He's doing this, he started doing this about six months after I did for health. He, he was hearing the same medical and clinical lectures I was hearing, not YouTube channels trying to sell stuff. These were recorded lectures at medical schools. And um, and he said, I don't do that. So he started and he's always been able to eat what he wanted as much as he wanted whenever he wanted. And now he just says, I'm, I'm good. I'm What? And our grocery bill continues to plummet. Buster Sugar Annie, good morning from Florida. Okay, Peggy. Stuart and Jennifer recently went to pain management, doctor with a client. I do home care. Boy, that will convince you to keep the weight off. All these people suffering most are overweight. I felt sorry for them. It is, listen, everything on me hurt. And I assumed it was because I was so overweight because everything, I didn't understand why my hands hurt or my, my shoulders. It's not like I walked around on my hands. Uh, within a very quick time, I would say within two weeks, maybe, I don't remember. I wish I had documented this. I just realized nothing hurt. And I don't know how I moved around with that much weight. I don't know how I did triathlons. Poorly. I did them poorly and slowly. But I don't know how I, I did. You know, I, I, hauling chicken feet up to the back yard. My husband can take, you know, two bags on his shoulders. They're 40-pound bags. 50-pound bags. 50-pound bags. And do it. I have to take the... He always leaves a couple of bags down, down here so that I can scoop it into a five-gallon bucket. And that's about 25 pounds, maybe a little less. And I carry that up. And I struggle to get up the hill with the extra 25 pounds. Yes, absolutely, Jennifer. Pooler writes, and amazing how long it takes to unlearn it. Yep. I need to order that book. Well, thank you. I'm really gratified. Let me see. Where were some of the quotes? Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Oscar Wilde. And um, and you you kind of make it the way you want it want it to be. I didn't put dates in it because you don't have to wait until Monday or the first of the year. Um, Confucius, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated, and that is certainly the truth with this protocol. It is simple, which is not to say it's easy. But there are people that will try to tell it, make it complicated for you, so that they can sell you something that supposedly makes it easy. Good morning from Ohio. Hey, Kathy. Good to see you, a patron. Judy Dulledge writes, I started with 250 milligrams and found over time 500 milligrams magnesium works for me. So, and um, this is not really unique to the ketogenic protocol. Magnesium deficiency is not uncommon in the general population. And I used to get cramps way before keto, particularly the summer of the triathlons. So we just take it to stave off leg cramps as much as possible. Judy Tucker writes, good morning. Good morning, Judy. You know, I was just talking about hauling 25 pounds of chicken feet up the hill and how hard it is. And I don't know how I did things 100 pounds ago. Judy Tucker is an actual farmer. And she's lost 150 pounds. Every time I think about that, I, I, I'm amazed. How did Judy run her farm? She and her husband, 150 pounds ago. I don't know. So thank you for that. Does anybody have any questions or comments? I'm just going to be, if you want to share your story or 
joke, <laughs> if you have a funny joke, or um, let me see, what observations? By the way, to reiterate, there are no products. There, There is no keto ice cream, even though it says it on the box. It's an unregulated term. It didn't even exist as a term, um, you know, five or six years ago. There are no keto brownie mix. And believe it or not, we actually don't need desserts in our lives. So we don't need to buy a book on how to cook keto desserts because they, are, they aren't. Unless you want to call, you know, a thick pork chop dessert. Even if you could get the carb carbohydrate count quite low compared to the straight up products. For me, I don't want fake versions of the stuff that got me there in the first place, got me fat in the first place. Because some foods, okay, okay, it's like the snack wells. Does anybody remember snack wells when it was, everything was about low fat? Oh, it's low fat. So snack wells. Well, for one thing, that was super high in carbs. So, you know, super high in carbs. If you take out the fat, the rest is carbs uh, other than a little bit of protein. But if, if, but if you think, oh, it's low fat, and then you eat the entire box, no one did themselves any favor. Plus, they were awful. So even if you have something that is lower in carbs than the original version, but then you eat lots of it, I'm an abstainer, not a moderator. Jody Wojewitz. Oh, I wish I could pronounce that name better. If you haven't tried the pink drink, try it. So refreshing and such a treat. Thanks for that. I really do like it. But interestingly, I only drink it on Saturday mornings when I'm doing my live streams. I don't know how that started. Judy Tucker writes, I know it makes me wonder how I carried around another person for all those years. And you did. Butter Sugar Annie writes, I feel so much better. I do supplement with super magnesium 400 from GNC and a little shot of pink salt water with my morning coffee. Judy Tucker writes, hello, Judy. Judy Porterfield. Happy ferret. I remember snack wells. Oi. Pooler writes, congratulations, Judy Tucker and Kathleen Hughes, who's a member of the club. Appreciate that. Good morning. Is it necessary to take, to take keto chow? I No. Why would it be necessary? Why? No. I don't even, I, no. If I'm eating very nutritious and delicious food, I don't need to add other things. I don't need stuff. I, I, we eat chicken thighs with the skin. We eat ribeyes. We eat ground beef. We eat beef liver. We eat scallops, shrimp, salmon, eggs, eggs, eggs. We have a lot of eggs, bacon, Italian sausage, sometimes spiralized zucchini and make a sauce of Italian sausage and some Reyes marinara. No, I, there is not one thing that I have purchased like that. I've been gifted some things and I re-gift them because I don't eat them. Uh, Yvonne Gilman writes, keep it simple and don't buy cake. If it's not in the cupboard, you can't be tempted. Hi from the UK. Absolutely. And Pula does a happy face. Kathy Sieber, prayers for Nancy. Oh, not doing too good right now. Kathy is a patron, and she and her friend, uh, Nancy, came down for the Go Keto with Casey Roadshow in Greensboro last October. And her and Kathy's friend Nancy is suffering with cancer. Sorry, sorry about that. Melinda Lancaster sounds like a lot of magnesium. Whatever works. And, and keep them in mind, it can say. And there are different formulations of magnesium. I do the magnesium chloride and it's slow release. So it's not, you know, doesn't, that, I, Dr. Finney recommended it. So I don't do it. Mm. And my husband and I both take one teaspoon of cod liver oil every day. 
And that's it. So my husband had a rotator cuff issue. And we were at the doctor and I went back there with him. And the intake nurse was, you know, taking a little history. And she asked what medications he's on. None. And the nurse was, none? She looks down at the chart, quotes his age. You're not on any medications. No. Wow. (laughs) She said that one of the things that takes up the most time for her is this is writing down people's medications. I mean, there are people taking nine, ten medications. Um, Judy Tucker writes, almost six years keto. This works. I'll be 71 years young. Happy coming up. And Kathy, um, Kathy Sieber writes, I do take, I do that magnesium every day. And Betty, look about, I'm 73, and thankfully, I'm not on any medications. Can, look at the people around us, young people who are on medications. Lisa Taiz, Thais, Lisa Thais, what time of day do you take cod liver oil, and what brand do you use? We just take it first thing in the morning. We're doing our morning routine, uh, along with the magnesium and the coffee. And we use Carlson's. Um, I have a link to that. If you go to my blog, I have a list of things like my faves and also my merch, but my faves, and I'm pretty sure I have the cod liver oil listed in there. I have it broken up into like health and beauty and um, kitchen and pantry products and appliances. And I, I know, I think I've got that, but it's Carlson's cod liver oil and I get it from Amazon. Oh, Judy Tucker writes, I'm off over 10 medications, off all of her, off off 10 medications. Just think about that. And Judy Dulledge writes, fantastic Judy T. And Heather Knowles writes, off blood pressure and cholesterol meds now. I started keto in April. Congratulations. That's fantastic. That's the, that's the lost headline. They shouldn't be writing about lose 10 pounds by, you know, Halloween. It should be, come off some medications. Olivia Richards writes, two Saturdays ago, I shared I had lost nine pounds. Now, as of today, down 16 pounds. Thank you for your advice. Going to keep going. Congratulations. Colleen Spruill, multiple medications seems to be the way our health care is provided. So disheartening it is. And then lots of flowers to Judy. And um, Kathy Sieber writes, great, Judy. And with this, all this uplifting news, I'm going to take the opportunity to sign off. Thank you for allowing me to be part of your Saturday. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the support. It just tickles me. It tickles me when somebody buys a cap or a mug. It really does. Or the book. So, oh, and by the way, um, I used to sell the spiral. I would do the fulfillment. Um but I got the, I did several printings of them and I would mail them and do all that myself, the packaging. But the costs became prohibitive. I would have to charge $25 to make it. So, but people, some people have gotten this book. It's called Perfect Bound. They take it to Kinko's or Staples and get a spiral binding put on it. So thanks for that tip. And I will see you next time. God willing, the creek don't rise. Please stay safe, stay cool, stay dry. Stay safe and thank you. See you next time.